Now we've talked a little bit about Booleans and DynaMesh, and we've talked about ZeroMesher. Let's talk about Booleans and ZeroMesher and how those are best used together. So I'm going to go out of edit mode, hit Control N to clear my canvas. We're going to go up here to this palette, and let's choose a cube 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Let's turn on X symmetry, and I'm going here to BI brush insert primitives, hit M, and let's grab a sphere. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pull out a sphere. Let's go down here to Subtool, Split Mass Points, and now the sphere is on the top. Well, actually I want the sphere on the bottom, so let's hit this bent arrow and move it beneath. So I'm going to use this as my main object. I'm going to use this as a Boolean object. So like we discussed before, I can do a subtractive mesh, and I can go in here to turn on Live Boolean, and as I move this around, it'll subtract out of this object. If I turn off Polyframe, you'll see this. Let's go ahead and reset. Let's tap X, go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and then hold down Alt and Reset Orientation. So we're right down the middle of this object. Now if I want a smoother version of this object, oops, sorry, let's move this back. If I want a smoother version of this object, I can go in here to Dynamic and turn that on and turn Smooth Subdiv up so I get a nice smooth version of this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back in here to BI Brush Insert Primitives, and let's hit M let's grab a cylinder. So I'm going to pull the cylinder here, and if I turn on polyframe, you're going to see this cylinder, number one, it has dynamic smooth turned on, and if I turn off polyframe, you're going to see it's causing that scalloping to happen. So let's go down here to crease and run that crease tolerance so it goes ahead and sharpens up those edges there. So you can see if we zoom in, we have the double dotted lines on those creases, on those creased edges now. So we get a much sharper representation, and we can hit W and we can push this in. Again, these are live, so I can move these around uh, wherever I'd like. And because this is already inserting on a subtool that is set to subtractive, as I keep adding to this, and if you want to see what these really are, just go into solo mode, and these are the actual objects, or turn on polyframe, you can see them a little bit better. Let's hit M, let's grab a cube, and we'll just drag this right on the back here. And one more time, we'll go down here to crease here, and then as we push this in, it's going to cut into our object here. And we can also hold down Control and drag out a copy. So very quickly we can go through here and start using Boolean objects to create this mesh. Now if we want to actually see the geometry, again this is just live geo, so at any point I can go through here and I can make changes to it, or I can delete things. But in order to make this real geometry, what I have to do is go down here to Subtool, Boolean and make Boolean mesh. Now if I hit this now, I'm not going to get these nice smooth results because again if I have turned dynamic off, it's just going to be pretty faceted. So let's keep dynamic on, but let's say dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh, and now if I go up here you're going to see there's a U mesh sitting here. So if I turn on polyframe, you can see this is the result I get. Now this geometry is a little bit rough, but what we can do is let's turn on X to go across X symmetry because again, if we mirror and weld across the X, it's the same. Let's go down here to Ziri Mesher, and because we kept everything nice and crispy with very hard edges, if I go in here to Ziri Mesher and say detect edges, let's say half for our poly count here, and hit Ziri Mesher, it'll go through, find our edges, and rebuild our geometry to give us a very clean result. In fact, I can keep hitting half and Ziri Mesher and see how far I can go. And at this point, with X symmetry turned on, I hold down Control Shift, isolate this, Control Shift drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, hover over a face, say close, convex hole, go ahead and close that hole, get that type of geo, Control Shift tap, Control W to make it all one poly group. And because the geometry is laid out pretty nicely, I can go through here and I can say bevel, edge loop complete. I can even do a inset, polygroup all. Let's do legacy, region. You can say QMesh, polygroup all, and just push this in and continue modeling as normal. And if I want to see this smooth, what I can do is I can tell it, let's turn on polyframe again. I can say geometry, crease PG, so all my polygroups will be creased, oops, crease PG. Then I can hit D to turn on dynamic, and I'll say smooth subdiv of 3, crease level of 2, 
And now I'll get a very nice smooth fall off in here. Or I can say crease level of one. And again, get a very nice soft smooth result. If I want to tighten up these edges, crease level of two. Smooth subdiv of three. Now let's talk a little bit more about Booleans. If we go back here, you're going to see we have this object here, and then we have another object that has subtractive. Well, let's say inside of these holes here, we want to have another cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this off, and by default, it puts it back to just a union mesh. So this symbol right here, and we say do a Boolean operation, it'll make it a union. If you do this, it'll do a subtraction. If you do this one, it'll do an intersection. So what I'm going to do is go into a polyframe here, Let's hold down Control Shift and isolate these cylinders here. I'm going to say Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. And if I go in here to Live Boolean, there's an order of operations happening. So it's going through, it has the cube, it's doing a subtractive, and then it's doing a union mesh. So if I go out of Polyframe here, and I go through here, let's go to Unmash Mesh Center and scale these down a little bit with LSIM turned on. You're going to see it's doing a subtractive operation, and now it's doing a union operation. So if I put this in here and I make it kind of snug, it's like, okay, good. It looks like this cylinder kind of fits within here. And I go down here and I say, dynamic subdivision, make a Boolean mesh. And I go back in here. So here's our new U mesh. You're going to see what it did was it stuck this cylinder here to our object. Now, if I didn't push in too far, which it looks like I didn't, it's not going to really stick to the object here, which is good. Let's go ahead and delete that and we'll delete our other U-Mesh that we made. Let's go back in here. However, if we hit W and we push this in too far, and we say, make a Boolean mesh, and we go in here to U-Mesh, it's like, okay, good. Uh, this is all fine, I hold down Control Shift, and now it's like, oh wait, I meant for this object to be separate. I wanted it to Boolean this major shape, and then I wanted to have this as a separate piece. So what you need to, but right now what it's doing is it's basically sewing it to the inside as a union mesh. So what you need to do is hit delete here, go into your booleans here, and I'm going to do a start group. So this little bent arrow right here, we can turn that on, and that's going to be a start. So it's going to run this operation here, and then it's going to run a new operation here. And all this is is a new start mesh, so it's just going to make a cylinder. Let's make it a little more interesting. Let's go to BI brush insert primitives. Let's hit M, and we'll choose a cube. We'll just drag this on here. Let's go ahead and say split mass points. And let's go ahead and turn off that start group here. And actually I want to move these around. I want this one to be the main one. So I'm going to move this up, turn on that start group, and then turn this start group off for this cube. Now for this cube, I'm going to go in here and we're going to do uh, turn off dynamic. Well, we can keep dynamic on. We just have to go down here and hit crease to make it sharp again. So now let's make this subtractive here. So basically what we're doing is we're having a big cube with chunks taken out, and then we have a new start group, which means ignore everything up here, make a cylinder, and cut this out. Now there's way cooler stuff you can cut out if you want to. So if I go in here to BI Brush Insert Boolean, and again I have W, so I can actually go through here and cycle through these, I can choose very, very cool designs here to cut out. Let's go ahead and choose this one here, we'll pull this out just a little bit. And we'll scale this up. So this is the result that I want. So now if I run make boolean mesh, because I had two start groups, I'm going to have a U mesh with two sub tools. I'm going to have this one here if I go into solo mode. So this is my original start group, and then it ran this operation, which was making a cylinder and taking this Boolean out. So that's basically how start groups work. And if you remember, let's go ahead and say delete all. You can also do this by folder. So if you remember when we were doing the folder operations, if we get rid of these start groups here, and I just go in here and say make a new folder, and we'll say first, and we'll drag this in, and we'll drag this in. And we'll order these so that this is first, and then this is second. And then we'll go in here and we'll say new folder. And we'll call this second. Now we got this one and this one in here. And again, just change their order. And we still have subtractive. The live boolean should still work just fine. Only now we have our cylinder and our boolean and then our box 
and our Boolean in separate folders. So now all I have to do is go in here to this and say Boolean with dynamic subdivision and that's going to turn off all the folder assets and if we want to go back to these and change we can and then it's going to put your UMesh right here underneath. And then same thing for this folder we can go in here and say Boolean with dynamic subdivision it'll turn your folder off and then there's your UMesh. So here's our UMesh results here and here and the folder contents still say the same.